Hello everybody, my name is Rachel and welcome to my channel, Kalinati. Today I'm going to give my thoughts on The Relentless Moon by Mary Robinette Kowal. This is the third novel in the Lady Astronaut series that began with The Calculating Stars and The Faded Sky. I will link my reviews for those first two books up above in case you want to start there. I adored those books so much and I've been really excited that more Lady Astronaut novels are coming out, though they have switched to a different character character. The first two books follow Elma York, the titular lady astronaut. She's the one out of the group of, of women astronauts that the media kind of latches on to. And in the third book, The Relentless Moon, Nicole Worgan, another woman from the original group, is the focus of the story. And the events of this book take place during the mission to Mars, when Elma and many other characters are away from Earth. So if you don't know anything about the series, I should probably back up a second and establish the premise. Um, the story begins in the 1950s when a meteor strike destroys a lot of the eastern seaboard of the United States. And this is ultimately going to lead to climate change that makes the Earth uninhabitable for humans. So the space programs of the world kind of go into accelerated drive to find a way to get off the planet, to establish a moon base, and to hopefully get to Mars all to create a new home for humans who are able to leave the planet. And I think something to keep in mind when beginning The Relentless Moon is the ongoing theme in this series about who has the privilege to access space travel, who is going to have the privilege to get off the planet and survive. Many, many people are going to be left in the dust because of where they live in the world, uh, because of their skin color, because of their means. If they're poor, they're not going to make it. So there is this Earth First movement that has caused problems in the past, and they are now actively targeting the IAC, trying to undermine confidence in the space program. And that is where we'll begin with the plot of this book. It follows Nicole Worgan. Like I said, she is one of the original group of lady astronauts. She was a side character in the first couple of books. And basically, she is a pilot and an astronaut, and she is uh, doing a lot of training for the IAC on Earth and hoping that she'll continue to uh, be given opportunities to pilot ships to the moon, like the, the moon shuttle and stuff. She's very worried that because of her age, she's over 50, her gender, because she's a woman in the 1960s, and because of her position as a politician's wife, that a lot of her career opportunities are basically going to evaporate unless she works really hard to just push herself into the opportunities that she sees. And at the beginning of the book, an IAC shuttle launch is sabotaged. Um, they're trying to hide this fact, though. They don't want it to get out into the news, obviously, because that would succeed in promoting the Earth First Movement's um, message to, to undermine the IAC. And Nicole ends up getting read into the situation called like the Icarus Project about the sabotage. And when she goes to the moon, um, she's tasked with helping the Moon Administrator um, investigate and try to control the acts of sabotage that are now happening on the Moon. So the, the meat of this story is trying to hunt down a saboteur on the Moon before everything falls apart, before people die. And at the same time, there is an epidemic raging on the very small Moon base. It's intense. <laughs> There's also a lot in the story about Nicole's relationship with her husband and her responsibilities as a politician's wife, who is very much under the scrutiny of the media. Her husband is a career politician. He's currently, I think, governor of Kansas, and he is about to announce that he is running for president. So there's a lot of pressure on her and also on him. They're, they're very supportive of each other, which is one of the best elements of the novel, but at the same time, they are constricted in what they can actually do because of how the world might see it, how the media might see it. Their marriage is basically under threat and it's getting away from them. They don't have time to deal with that necessarily because their jobs are taking them in separate directions. But that is actually something I really wanted to point out about this story though. For people who have read the first two books, the, the heart of the first two books, I think what really um, was in the relationship between Elma and her husband, Nathaniel. And so there's really a, a focus on the marriage 
in the first two stories and now you have that again in The Relentless Moon, but it's a completely different kind of relationship. It's still strong and supportive and really like emotionally satisfying in that way, especially when you're reading about a woman in a time when sexism and other prejudices are keeping her from her potential that her husband is incredibly supportive of her. That is wonderful to read, but it's not a repeat of the previous relationship that readers will know from, from the series so far. So I liked how all of that was done. With that, I'm starting to get into my feelings, so I'm just gonna pivot to that entirely. Um, this book was another like five-star installment in the series for me. I loved the first two and I thought this one was still pretty dang brilliant. That being said, it's interesting to me that this was really a slow burn novel. Um, the first two books, I read them so fast it was like my life depended on it. This book actually took me months to get past the beginning and then um, about a week to really get to the halfway point. And at that, at that point, I was captured. When the, the sabotage plot really crystallized and I completely understood what the problem was and what characters were going to be working towards. And then also that's sort of the point where Nicole stops investigating on her own. She brings other people in to help her and it becomes a group effort to work the problem. I don't think it's a coincidence that I started to really love the story when Nicole started working with other people. I love seeing a group of people who are close and trust each other and highly skilled sitting down in a room to work a problem together. That is amazing. And I just really loved seeing more of the long-running side characters working closely with Nicole. Um, Myrtle and Eugene and Helen and a bunch of other people reappear. So at this point, I need to talk about Nicole because I think that understanding the type of person that Nicole is and how that works in the story is really important. I spent a lot of this book thinking, do I like Nicole? Do I need to like her or approve of everything that she does in order to enjoy the story? And how she behaves, the decisions that she makes, the kind of person that she is, how is that integral to the story being told here? Nicole is a challenging character, and I think that the way her story arc is, is done in this novel is pretty brilliant. She manages to be a character who is so rich and complex and just has so many facts fascinating, sometimes, I don't know, contradicting qualities, a great backstory, wonderful abilities, and at the same time, she isn't necessarily likable. She isn't necessarily somebody that I would want to spend any time with, but reading about her was challenging and, once again, very thought-provoking. Um, she's a very ambitious, career-oriented woman. She has goals and she wants to get to them. She is very laser-focused on what will be best for her and also for her husband as a politician. She knows how to play the game and she's constantly looking for little ways to manipulate and control people. I make her sound very manipulative and cunning because she kind of is, and yet she doesn't not care about other people. She absolutely loves her husband, who is her rock, and she is very devoted to her fellow astronauts. She's proud of her students. She does actually work well with other people, and she's basically a strong, strong woman with a core of steel, and she could probably achieve a thousand times more if she wasn't constrained by the social forces of the time period. And I think one of perhaps the most frustrating things for her is that she's always aware of that. Lastly, I want to talk a little bit more about what I enjoyed about the plot of this and then the structure, both in this book, but also kind of like in the series overall at this point. So the plot of this is 
It's pretty much a, a mystery plot, almost like a spy thriller, a hunt for a saboteur on the moon. And I, I love that. I love mystery plots in science fiction, especially when they are constrained and limited by a small space and by a very small community. And you absolutely get that with the, the limited space at the moon base and then how few people are actually there. Um, the hunt for the clues, trying to figure out which of the people that Nicole interacts with on a regular basis might be the one betraying her. That is fantastic. Um, and what I really appreciate about the book overall is how it just fits in so neatly with the, the major story arc of the series overall. I feel like at this point, Kowal is juggling so many different plot things and so many characters that something could have just fallen through the cracks and it didn't. I really felt like this was a strong installment in the overall story of humanity's race to the stars, I guess. And at the same time, it's, it's kind of grabbing things from other books, it's filling in gaps, and I think it's seeding possibilities for, for the next book. And that leads me to the epilogue, which is perhaps my only nitpicky complaint about this book overall. Now keep in mind that I usually have zero use for prologues and epilogues. I usually find them to be unnecessary, or at best I'm relatively neutral on them. Um, this book does have kind of an epilogue that jumps a bit into the future and shows you where characters have ended up after some time, and it reveals this major thing about Nicole, which I think it was supposed to be a, oh yeah, good things happening for Nicole, she's super competent. And my reaction to it was, how in the world did that happen? You just skipped over like this crazy important story about how that was even possible. Oh, maybe that's gonna be in another book. It just, it made me scratch my head a little bit. Um, I think it's there also for kind of an emotional reason. It closes off some of the, the really important emotional storylines in the book for Nicole, for some other characters. It, it presents perhaps a bit more of a happy ending to the novel. And yet, I just thought it could have ended at the actual last chapter instead of after the epilogue. That was perhaps a weird note to end this review on, I'm sorry. But anyway, The Relentless Moon. I really, really enjoyed this book and I am excited for the direction that the series is going in overall. And I think my highest praise will always be for how realistic Kowal's characters are. She has this gift for making her characters seem like real people and that really elicits strong emotion from me. So with that, if this book sounds good to you and you haven't read the series, I definitely recommend starting with The Calculating Stars and just reading them in order to this book. Um, and if you have read this and if you have any comments you would like to share, any thoughts, leave them down below for me because I would love to hear from you. Thank you so much for watching and I'll be back to talk to you again soon. And until then, bye.